In 1959, the brainchild of a British inventor, the hovercraft shook the world when it made its first public appearance. And for the inventor, ex-boat builder Christopher Cockerell, part of a dream had come true. But what has happened to the hovercraft since then? Today, as technical director of a government-financed company, Mr. Cockerell is responsible for keeping Britain in the lead of an exciting new business, the hovercraft industry. Plans for the future, like this 300 mile an hour, 150 passenger hover car to replace trains, occupy him and his 45 designers and technicians at their base near Southampton. Present problems have to be ironed out too. A scale model hovering over a moving table shows how the craft will behave with different sea conditions. Information gained from research is passed on to the three companies in Britain building hovercraft under license. The aircraft firm at Cowles, Isle of Wight, which built the first four-ton, 50-mile-an-hour hovercraft, soon started work on its successor, the SRN2, a 27-tonner. Built of alloy and with four aircraft engines, it includes cabin accommodation. The hovercraft principle of lifting a vehicle on a cushion of air can be used in hundreds of different ways. One company has fitted it to a conventional vehicle for use over rough ground. If the going gets too rough or boggy, a fan is switched on to build up an air cushion underneath, so taking weight off the wheels. Here's the latest thing in wheelbarrows, the hover barrow. Just the slightest push and it glides at a height of a few inches over mud, sand, snow or slush. Then for family use, there's the hover scooter. This one was built for his own use by Mr. Don Robertson at his Surrey home for as little as 250 pounds. Made of plastic and plywood, it's powered by a motorcycle engine. An invention as revolutionary as the steam engine, the hovercraft is perhaps an answer to unemployment in Britain's shipbuilding yards. At least, that's what this Clydeside yard feels. With over a hundred years of shipbuilding experience and only one order for a new ship over the last three years, they're now branching out into the hovercraft industry. Some 50 men at the yard are kept busy on their side-walled hovercraft project, which aims at producing a fast, sheltered water commercial craft with low running costs. Their first experimental craft, a five-tonner, 60 feet long and powered by two outboard motors, cruises at 20 miles an hour. Their second craft, a 25-tonner, capable of 30 miles an hour and more, is also based on the sidewall principle. Unlike the airscrew type of propelled hovercraft, which leaves the water completely, the sides of this hollow bottom craft, which uses water propulsion, must stay in the water as she lifts. Another airscrew-driven hovercraft is the VA-3, also produced by a British aircraft company. It's the first hovercraft in the world to run a scheduled passenger service and has seating for 24 people. Final checks are made before engine trials. While she's tethered to the tarmac, two of her four gas turbine engines, which provide lift, are tested. The other two engines, mounted at the rear of the craft, are to drive her forward. and the VA-3 is taken to the Solent for more thorough sea trials. Meanwhile, on the other side of the Solent, at Cowles, the larger SRN-2, which can take 64 passengers, is being presented to the world's press. Rivalry among British hovercraft builders is hotting up. It's a good sign. 
the SRN2, which is 64 feet long, manoeuvres easily out through the yachts to the more open water. Then her engines are opened up to a steady 70 miles an hour. To passengers, it's like riding in a modern airliner, more comfortable than a fast train. As well as being able to navigate shallow waters inaccessible to shipping, one of the most important features of this type of hovercraft is that it doesn't need costly harbour or dock facilities to operate from. At any state of tide, it just comes ashore and sits on the beach. What could be simpler? Four years after Britain pioneered the hovercraft, the world's first hovercraft passenger service started from Rill in North Wales to Wallasey on the Wirral. With six trips a day each way, at one pound a trip, passengers flocked to book their seats. The world's first mail to be delivered by hovercraft also went aboard the VA-3. Using the beach as a terminal, the hover coach was ready to leave. Its lifting engines ease it down to the water. And the spray flies. Spray was one of the problems of the earlier hovercraft, but as the craft go faster, it's considerably reduced. What's it like to drive? Like a car on ice, says 41 years old chief test pilot Les Cahoon. At 70 miles an hour, VA-3 rides three feet clear of the water, like a low-flying aeroplane. But compared with an aeroplane of the same weight, the hovercraft needs only one quarter of the power for the same speed. Ideal for sea trips up to 100 miles, the larger hovercraft of today would make excellent long-distance ferries. Passenger fares would work out at about thruppence a mile, the same as a bus. The 15 mile rill to Wallasey trip, which normally takes two hours by road, is a 20 minute hop for VA3. With congested air traffic and overcrowded roads, this new vehicle is undoubtedly an important form of transport of the future. And there are plans for a 10,000 ton ocean going hovercraft travelling at 250 miles an hour within the next 10 years. Leading the world now, Britain's new hovercraft industry should be given one order only, full speed ahead.